How are you doing today? Well, I uh, would like to thank uh, Pa Charles for the introductions. And it's a very nice batik that you're wearing. And thanks for supporting the Indonesian's creative economy product, batik, which is uh, our number one export now, contributing to about two thirds of the $26 billion uh, export that uh, uh, we are able to record uh, last year. And I would like also uh, to thank the um, uh, Mrs. Ng uh, from the foundations. And uh, it's truly an honor for me to be able to be here. Uh, to be at the inaugural uh, lecture for the Hong Kong ASEAN Foundations. Um, I would like also to introduce my team member, uh, the Honorable Ricky Suhendar, Consul General of Indonesia in Hong Kong, um, uh, Deputy Minister Rizky Handayani in charge for industry and investments, and Director in in charge of financial access, uh, Mr. Angara Hayun. Uh, and also, uh, I would like uh, to acknowledge the presence of uh, some key uh, VIPs here. Uh, I was told the Honorable uh, Regina IP will be here from convener of the Hong Kong Executive Council, uh, Honorable Ong Sui uh, Gay, Consulate General of Singapore in Hong Kong, um, the Honorable Muzambil Markam, Consul General of Malaysia in Hong Kong. Thank you very much. Um, um, also from uh, uh, Charles, a CEO of Hong Kong ASEAN Foundations, and uh, Daryl Ng, Hong Kong ASEAN Foundations Chairman. And last but not least, uh, Mr. Kin Chan, who initiated the email uh, from Aga Street Management Limited, Hong Kong. Before I uh, open up uh, with uh, some uh, slides and presentations, I would like to uh, tell you a story about my friendship with Kin Chan. Uh, I, but before I tell a story, about Kinchan, I tell a story first with my interactions with the Far East group. I, uh, I was young, 20-something, uh, and I got the first uh, stint, and I was so proud um, of uh, going to an overseas assignment. Uh, I used to work in a group called Astra Group in Indonesia. Many of you probably would be familiar with Astra Group. Is it a Hong Kong company already? Oh yes, now it's Jardine. Well, back then it was not Jardine, <laughs> obviously. But uh, the chairmen uh, have uh, two um, sons, and I work for, for the, uh, the eldest son, Edward Surajaya. So, uh, his uh, group has a presence in Hong Kong and Singapore, and I was sent to Singapore. And my first um, apartment in uh, Singapore is Lucky Plaza. <laughs> That's uh, built and uh, still owned by the Faris group. Still owned. Yes. <laughs> So at that time, uh, just the Lucky Plaza apartment is adjacent to a Lucky Plaza uh, shopping center where uh, in, in the weekends I could feel at home because a lot of Indonesians uh, helpers congregate around Lucky Plaza. Uh, and also I got my uh, regular haircuts uh, and this is a five years overseas assignment in the Far East Plaza. Uh, so that's my little connections to the Far East group. And I, um, I was fired from my job 
during the 97-98 crisis, and I tried to build my business. Um, first in financial consulting, and then in financial deal making, and eventually, uh, one of my first investments, I needed money and nobody would want to lend the money. And lo and behold, Mr. Kin Chan flew from Hong Kong, lend me the money that I need to close a deal. Because without that last piece of the money that I need, I would not be able to close the deal. So Mr. Kin uh, flew from Hong Kong and within 48 hours approved. One weekend, One weekend 48 hours. <laughs> approved <laughs> approve the $10 million uh, that I borrow for less than three months. And he made a lot of money. but I made more. <laughs> so that was my uh, connections with Pakin. And this is a true uh, friendship and partnership because since then, then he got uh, more comfortable investing and opening up uh, more investment opportunities for him. And I have to attest that Kin worked very fast um, and one of the smartest uh, deal maker around, so I'm I'm very happy that uh, uh, a couple of months ago he sent me an email, and he still remember me, and I actually um, uh, uh, I'm very honored to be uh, to be part of this inaugural uh, lecture for the Hong Kong ASEAN Foundations. You're part of it, and it's also your special day. Uh, later on today, we'll see the wedding of your uh, son and daughter. So um, on behalf of the government of Indonesia, who is now chairman of ASEAN, uh, we uh, would like to express our gratitude to uh, and appreciate uh, Charles and the organizers uh, of the Hong Kong ASEAN Foundation's inaugural lecture, uh, and this is opening up also the Hong Kong ASEAN Dialogue. Uh, my job uh, also extends to the chairmanship of the ASEAN Tourism Forum, uh, whereby for the longest time, we want to create ASEAN as a single destination. Uh, we often compete. We love to compete. Um, they compare Thailand numbers, Malaysia numbers, Indonesia numbers, but we forget that we need to collaborate more uh, within the spirit of ASEAN. And this is really an opportune time because Hong Kong just opening up an unprecedented 500,000 <laughs> tickets are being offered and snap within I don't know how many minutes in uh, Singapore. 35 minutes gone. And this weekend it will be in Indonesia. I think uh, less than 20 minutes probably <laughs> because Indonesians love to go to Hong Kong uh, and shopping, injecting to the economy. Uh, but uh, we, we are welcoming uh, Hong Kong reopening. And when I was flying from here from Berlin, I was told to do PCR tests. Uh, which is, you know, we're so accustomed of doing in Indonesia during 2021, 2022. Uh, we do it maybe twice a week or as I travel much, maybe sometime more. Uh, but increasingly as the COVID restrictions are being uh, brought down, uh, we are uh, looking at uh, increased mobility. And China has emer emerged, uh, and Hong Kong is a primary get gateway, as ASEAN's primary trading partner and investment source. In particular, uh, I'm, if I'm looking for uh, Indonesian case. And in terms of 
uh, trade value, uh, this continues to increase uh, for the Indonesians' uh, number. And this is thanks to a lot of mainstreaming of our local uh, and domestic uh, natural resources. It reached 133.4 billion US dollar in 2022. And Indonesia's export to China uh, amounted uh, to 12.16 billion US dollar in 2022. This is close to a uh, record high. Uh, and we recorded the largest surplus also as we import from China about 11.2 billion US dollar. When you talk about ASEAN as a whole uh, investments and trade platform, it's uh, 600 million uh, people altogether uh, and uh, with the, the ASEAN um, trade and tourism on the rise, we believe that this is an opportune time, my first visit to Hong Kong, to be able to talk with you guys, to share our uh, view going forward and how we intend uh, to engage closer with Hong Kong uh, in terms of how we could promote more, uh, not only tourism and travel, but also trade and investments. Uh, in Indonesian context, our economy is recovering on a robust uh, pace. Last year, we grew 5.31%, which is the highest in 10 years. And this is the highest also economic growth during President Jokowi's time. Uh, it is supported by the tourism and creative economy, whereby the tourism which was targeting 3.6 million foreign tourist arrival, recorded 5.5 million thereabouts. And the pandemic winner is the domestic movement of uh, tourists from domestic bases, which reached 700 million plus of domestic tourist movements. We are looking at 2023 even with a much higher anticipations focusing on quality and sustainability. Due to the uh, pandemic, our tourism, and this is happening across ASEAN, I was speaking with my colleague uh, at ITB Berlin. Uh, most of the big markets are there. We are seeing a focus on personalized, localized, customized, and smaller in size type of uh, tourism recovery, whereby people stay longer in a destinations. They want to have a different experience. And also, they have a bigger spending to local economies. So this year, Indonesia's target 7.4 million uh, foreign tourist arrival, with the tourism revenue close to $6 billion, and domestic travelers reaching to 1.4 billion of domestic travelers' movements. In terms of creative economy, our target for export value is 26.5 billion US dollar with the value added enhancements to our GDP right at around 1,300 trillion rupiah. Why this is so significant and strategic it's because it is home of 45 million Indonesians having their livelihood depend on tourism and creative economy. And we are uh, very, very um, optimistic that with Hong Kong uh, and China reopening, we're able to attract 255,000 Chinese tourists into Indonesia and more to Thailand and Vietnam, which is only a fraction of pre-COVID number of around 2.5 million for Indonesia. China has emerged as the second largest investors in Indonesia now, pouring a whopping 8.2 billion US dollars. Second only after Singapore, whereby Singapore only holds uh, that 
positions for the last 10 years, namely because it's financial uh, efficiency, whereby a lot of investments are based out of our great neighbor, Singapore. And five key sectors from China have been metals, transportations, telecommunications, and transportations that includes the high-speed train that we will inaugurate uh, middle part of this year, and I intend to be the first group to travel on the high-speed uh, Chinese train. Ken, you are invited. Uh, uh, to, uh, which normally take three hours, and Ibu Rizki is from Bandung. It will be less than one hour when the high-speed train, which is completely transforming uh, culturally, transforming socio-economically uh, how people move within the uh, West Java and Western part of Java. Uh, electricity, um, Chinese investors have been very focused. Gas, and gas, water, uh, along with industrial estates, property, chemicals, and pharmaceuticals. Notably, Indonesia and China also have collaborated on several fronts, including this huge smelter based on bauxite, but also in healthcare. Uh, Indonesia has placed considerable emphasis on startup industry, online marketplace, and e-commerce, which is part of our digital economy. Over the last five years, Hong Kong has totally invested, which is small money for Ken Chan, $19 million in Indonesia. <laughs> but this um, shows that how we could attract more value-added investments in new areas and new economies such as green industries on new and renewable energies, and we prioritize energy efficiency as well as environmental sustainability. In tourism and creative uh, economy sectors, uh, there are uh, new approaches being done, which is uh, an establishment of special economic zones. There are eight tourism special economic zones whereby we can offer incentives, tax, holidays, and permits expedited on an expedited basis, as well as licenses. There are five super priority destinations in Lake Toba, which is a beautiful lake, uh, the largest volcanic lake in north part of Sumatra. Borobudur, which hosts near Yogyakarta, the largest Buddhist temple in the world. Uh, Mandalika in Lombok, uh, we, we have our MotoGP uh, yearly event there. Uh, Labuan Bajo, this is in East Nusa Tenggara, which is uh, home of the Komodo dragon, part of the Jurassic era that escaped extinction. And one other super priority destinations in the north part of Sulawesi, close to Manado, that we call the Bikupa. There's also 12, there are also 12 sustainable tourism investment projects. And I'm very excited that this year finally will have its first special economic zone called Kura Pura Valley. This is developed by the Kajatum Nagru, uh, a special economic zone of uh, near Shrayan Island at Asar Bali. And this is going to offer close to 10 billion dollars worth of investments in the next years to come. And they expect to create 35,000 direct new jobs and about 64,000 indirect jobs with one of states worth called $32 billion or thereabout. Uh, it used to be called Bali Turtle Island Development and it's now Pura Pura is Turtle in Masa and it's just renamed uh, the Pura Pura Island. Uh, we also uh, would like to update you on agreement as a result of the G20 summit and the ASEAN uh, forum. The G20 summit held in Bali in November 2022 uh, was a successful 
and it witnessed the first summit of President Xi and President Biden. I was there um, to see the uh, historical uh, first summit between the two leaders. And uh, in addition to that, G20 was able to uh, launch this Bali guidelines whereby China and Indonesia sign a memorandum of understanding for continuing working on the in improvement of our digital economy to pledge and to promote joint training programs, meetings, seminars in the digital economic sphere. Also within the ASEAN Tourism Forum, whereby we have held a China as our main dialogue partners, uh, we have heard uh, China's commitment and it's at the forefront of the effort to plan, establish direct flights to routes for several ASEAN destinations. Vietnam already received close to 100 flights a week. Thailand nearing about 100 flights a week. We're just starting for Bali and Jakarta with Xiamen Air uh, and Southern uh, air, but we need more because we believe that by direct connectivity we'll be able to link uh, Indonesia and ASEAN better. And uh, we believe that ASEAN destinations will be more uh, greatly interconnected by flights among the ASEAN top capital and tourist destinations. The uh, Ministry of Tourism and Culture of China has also listed Indonesia as one of its 20 preferred tourist destinations for Chinese tourist groups, along with few other ASEAN countries. And we are welcoming, we are rolling our red carpet uh, to Chinese tourists. Uh, I, through artificial intelligence and some new applications, was able to speak Mandarin to some of our uh, Chinese uh, travel agents and tour operators, uh, welcoming them. Um, and we aim to attract more uh, Chinese tourists throughout 2023. In closing, uh, let me reiterate our commitment to work with Hong Kong ASEAN foundations uh, to open up doors for more trade and investments, tourism and travel, and in particular coming in from mainland China uh, to promote and facilitate uh, greater economic goods as well as creating good job. We're ready to step up our promotion efforts. And uh, this is uh, my first in the Fullerton hotel in Hong Kong with a beautiful view uh, at the Ocean Park. Um, and by the way, uh, Fullerton is my favorite hotel when I visit Singapore. I stay at the ex-post office. I was in Singapore when it was still a post office. Uh, but now it's a, a hotel uh, and also the next uh, door hotel at the uh, uh, near uh, I would say Clifford Pier, is that Fullerton Bay Hotel. It's a beautiful uh, setup and truly this one is also iconic. I heard from pa Charles that you also operate hotel in Sydney. Um, so congratulations on because this is part of the tourism ecosystem. And uh, we heard also there are a lot of Indonesian uh, human uh, resources in in the hotel working in various hospitality related. So we believe also people to people relationship within this Hong Kong ASEAN uh, context uh, will uh, be beneficial for uh, ASEAN hospitality industries as we also um, under the ministry operate six tourism polytechnic institute that produce uh, the best practice for hospitality groups, and we would like to also collaborate uh, with Hong Kong ASEAN foundations on various creative sectors, uh, such as fashion, batik is one of them, culinary, film, music, um, 
digital applications, and Hong Kong is known for its uh, advance on digital ap applications, but film, we need to do better because our friends from Korea is now dominating. But when I grew up, I watched Hong Kong movies, uh, all the Kung Fu movies, uh, but not, now my friends of my kids are all watching Korean dramas. We need to create ASEAN dramas based on how Hong Kong has been able to develop its film industry. And this is something that we're working very, very closely with uh, uh, Pak Riki. Um, and this morning we had a meeting with TVB and some of the investors. So we believe by working together uh, closer, the Hong Kong ASEAN uh, will boost the tourism and creative economy industries and we can achieve our shared goal of economic uh, recovery and certainly prosperity together. Uh, this is the year of the water rabbit, right? And water rabbit is known for prosperity. <laughs> and that's why I listed prosperity as one of the keys. So thank you very much once again. I would like to open myself if you have uh, some few questions. But with that, I end uh, my remarks and I pass back to Charles. Thank you very much. <laughs> Success to you all. Uh, okay, without further ado, maybe we can start with uh, the targets that you have set. We are already at mid-March, very, very soon. You've set the target of 7.4 million tourist arrivals, uh, and you've also been very good at setting a lower bar of 3.5 million. But looking at the landscape so far, what do you consider to be some of the obstacles that could detract you from achieving that ambition? Well, thank you, Zoraida. Um, I did not set the lower bar, by the way. <laughs> it is set by the National Planning Agency and Sri Mulyani as uh, <laughs> Minister of Finance. Kin likes uh, Sri Mulyani so much. Um, and we were tasked with that number with a very limited budget because uh, COVID restrictions, reallocations for COVID measures. But as the COVID subsides and we achieve vaccinations rate that is even higher than everybody could ever imagine, um, we had to deal with so many issues like inflations, um, also slowdown in key of our markets, uh, our key markets economy which affects uh, travel spending and budget. Uh, we also uh, have to deal with geopolitics. Um, Russia, U Ukraine have been uh, in the top 10 of our foreign tourist arrivals. So that 3.6 million was, uh, was surpassed by this, f uh, that target was surpa surpassed by close to 40% above target last year. So this year, aha, uh -huh, they say, even with a lower budget, you could actually achieve and 40% higher. Now we will double your target to 7.4 uh, million, and yet we will cut your budget by 20%. <laughs> so I started believing this is how I would tell my portfolio company CEO, okay, good job of uh, achieving your target. So next year, you're gonna have a higher um, targets, but uh, we're gonna cut uh, your paycheck, something like that. So it sounds like Kin also when he talks to some of his companies in Indonesia. <laughs> When I run private equity, I, I would do the same. So I got taste of my own medicine now. Uh, so this year, we our budget continued to be uh, slashed. So we had to deal with uh, how we do promotions. Uh, and we need to do promotions heavily into the digital era. How do we do a, a targeted and segmented uh, uh, promotion? So 
ASEAN is a great platform. So during the ASEAN Tourism Forum, we agree, and I believe there is uh, also Consul General from the Philippines. Um, I spoke with uh, Secretary of Tourism, uh, Christina Frasco, uh, saying that let's talk about how we could uh, develop clusters of southern Philippine and northern part of Sulawesi, whereby crews uh, could offer uh, destinations both in the Philippines and in Indonesia, such as Raja Ampat, Wakatobi, Labuan Bajo, uh, as part of a package that include uh, uh, some of the areas like Cebu and uh, uh, Palawan areas in, in the Philippines. Also, the Riau Islands uh, developing with the Singapore, uh, Batam and Bintan are now reopening. Uh, and how do we work even closer together, including a possibility of having F1 uh, race in Bintan. So it ease up uh, some of the uh, sort of like the congestions of all week long. Singapore might not like that. <laughs> Singapore actually proposed. <laughs> It was actually proposed uh, by Singapore. Essentially. Let's have the race in Bintan, but people stay in Singapore. <laughs> Singapore, don't underestimate Singapore. They, uh, they're very good in making sure they make the most money. No offense, but I used to live in Singapore staying in Lucky Plaza, so I know. <laughs> That's why. They say you race in Bintan, but you spend money in Singapore. So we they race in Bintan, then race in Marina Bay. Yes, <laughs> it could be also uh, structured that way also. But uh, we, uh, we're working closer as ASEAN to uh, navigate the lower budget that we're having. But inflation is key issues because uh, airfare is killing the uh, travel budgets. Uh, so we try to offer um, longer staying uh, guests in terms of few locations uh, within the vicinity. For instance, Bali, you could access also Lombok uh, and nearby Banyuwangi. Uh, and also we are offering uh, for Kuala Lumpur to be uh, looking at the uh, northern part of Sumatra. Banda, from Banda Aceh all the way down to uh, Padang and Palembang. And also with Thailand, we're offering uh, twinning destinations of Bangkok and Yogyakarta, for instance, uh, opening up corridors that has not been uh, tried before. And one of the lowest hanging fruits is medical tourism, whereby $11 billion of Indonesians uh, healthcare uh, spending have been uh, in areas such as uh, Sing well, mostly in Penang, in mm -hmm. Kuala Lumpur, and also in Singapore and Bangkok and increasingly Hong Kong as well. So how do we work together in the healthcare industries to offer best practice on medical tourism? For instance, maybe diagnostic uh, would be, would be because it's much simpler, could be done in Indonesia, but for more complex procedures to be done in Singapore and specialized uh, procedures to be done in uh, Penang or Kuala Lumpur, uh, some areas of uh, working cooperations that would be needed uh, as we navigate 2023 and 2024. And in particular, Indonesia and Thailand uh, we're also seeing elections coming up mm -hmm. very soon. Uh, however, we believe uh, in the Indonesian context that uh, the elections this year is going to be more on continuing uh, and in continuity of the economic uh, progress and reforms. So the number one issues of uh, uh, the elections will be jobs, uh, will be prices of uh, food, prices of energy, and how do we continue to empower the middle income to uh, rise uh, and see uh, an increase in, in prosperity. Uh, and this is something that I would say uh, 
uh, one of the key achievements of President Jokowi's administration is that less than one year before the next year elections, his approval rating is still very high, which is unheard of on the lame duck situations to maintain this 75% uh, plus uh, public approval rating. Uh, I'm very tempted to go into the direction of politics and elections and you, but I shall resist and return to that later. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's keep to the topic at hand for a while. I think in your speech, you identified uh, several priority destinations and a couple of uh, super priority destinations. But uh, apart from Ken Chan, there are many other investors in the audience. Maybe you could help us by elaborating on the kinds of investments that you're looking for with regards to these areas. Uh, given the fact that you know, lately we've seen uh, messaging from the Indonesian government that suggests they want a particular type of investment. For example, when it comes to hotels, they're not looking for three-star hotels in Lake Toba, for example. They want five-star hotels. So what is the messaging to investors who are here in Hong Kong and in China? We're open for investments. And my coordinating minister said that uh, we just hosted the F1 powerboat, which is uh, uh, the equivalent of F1, Formula One uh, racing, but uh, underwater. Uh, there were close to 40,000 spectators, and they were running out of hotels, in particular, the five-star hotels. And it was so bad that um, some of the guests are staying in, in uh, the homes of the local people uh, and the local people offering one room uh, to be uh, remodeled for like a homestay. Uh, so the messaging uh, is basically catered that please come and invest. Uh, and we are punching way below our weight in terms of tourism investment. It, it actually makes me uh, very, very, uh, I would say, uh, optimistic that uh, uh, because the increased number of uh, tourists, in particular domestic tourists with the middle income rising, uh, they would like to enjoy a quality hotels such as this one. And uh, three-star uh, business hotels have been able uh, to be uh, to be constructed, but it offers very minimum services. But if, in order for us to get uh, a different experience, we'd like to open up uh, investment in more, uh, uh, I would say, the international standard. Bali, for instance, uh, have been able to attract that type of investments. But the five super priority destinations we are uh, continuing to work hard to invite the likes of hopefully Fullerton um, and the Far East Group to invest, um, operating international chains, uh, because today is none. Uh, there's no international chains operating in this majestic uh, Danau Toba. But uh, we, as being innovative and creative, uh, and it takes some time to build the um, large resorts. I think because of the concept of ecotourism, now they're offering, like in Labuan Bajo, experience of spending a night uh, and live on boat type of pinisi mm -hmm. uh, boats. Uh, it's luxury, but uh, it also uh, provide the experience of you moving uh, from one spot to another in this very large uh, uh, Toba Lake. Uh, Borobudur is uh, it's much better because uh, it's near uh, Yogyakarta. Uh, so we have five-star hotel in Yogyakarta. Mandalika, there's some five-star hotels, but we need to attract more. And Labuan Bajo is bursting with investments. Uh, the best hotel in the world, Nihiwatu, is opening up soon, and Marriott also opening up soon in Labuan Bajo, and similar in Likupang area. So five super priority destinations. Lake Toba is the one that really in need of the international 
uh, hotels going to be uh, invested by uh, be it domestic investors or international investors. Mm -hmm. Uh, very quickly, before we turn to the subject of Chinese tourists and Chinese investments, um, what about the issue of the ease of doing business in Indonesia? I think Indonesia is unfortunately so, uh, legendary in having a lot of red tape that can end up... Legendary uh, <laughs> in a notorious way. <laughs> I was trying to be polite. Uh, legendary. <laughs> And, and, you know, tying up business people in all sorts of red tape that could eventually act as a deterrent to them investing. So what uh, efforts have uh, the Jokowi administration engaged in in these last few years that makes you confident that things will change? I will not sugarcoat this. This continues to be an issue. And I was coming from a private sector, so I know the frustrations. and. Jokowi's uh, government have been very clear in terms of its mandate to clean up the government, uh, improve business climate. Uh, we launched uh, one of the massive, probably uh, structural reform ever attempted uh, in the last 20 years with the job creation bills, uh, which, with the intentions of making uh, uh, ease of doing business top priority. Uh, but then there is still complaint about red tapes and we're addressing uh, the issue even one by one. I become like a concierge of uh, investors who have stumbled upon issues, other issues, local government, central government, law, legal issues. Uh, so I guess uh, we're on the right track, but we need to move uh, much faster, swifter, in terms of addressing and clean up all this uh, uh, bureaucracy and, and red tapes. Uh, and we, are, we went as far as taking back some of the local uh, government's ability to issue regulations, because in the past 20 years, since we, we start the local autonomy, there are uh, tough regulations being issued by local government that doesn't make sense and it actually create impediments to, to businesses. So uh, Jokowi is a businessman himself. Uh, his approach uh, from small medium enterprises framework, how we could easy uh, have a, obtain an easy permits and licensing. And one of the uh, key uh, enablers is actually digital economy. Once you digitalize this licensing issues and permitting issues um, and being transparent and accountable, I think more and more uh, you could make uh, efficiency. Uh, we aim to continue this reform and this uh, progress. And I think uh, it's, go it's going to be a, a huge uh, issues of uh, the next government as well, uh, when they obtain the mandate to continue uh, the reform and making sure the ease of doing business and the complaint from the business communities are continuing to be addressed. Okay, earlier I was trying to be polite, but now I shall be blunt. Yes. Uh, <laughs> how welcome really are Chinese tourists and Chinese investments? Given the fact that even though China was the second largest contributor of your FDI in 2022, we've read so many reports of um, on the ground friction between Chinese tourists, Chinese workers, and local Indonesians. Clearly, there are problems on the ground. Uh, in January, there was a huge protest in Morowali where I think there were at least two fatalities, one on the Indonesian side, one on the Chinese side, and the incident, I think, left many more people injured. So what level of confidence should we attach to the kind of promises that your government has made to make sure that there's peace on the ground? We are dead serious in terms of inviting investors to come, including uh, Chinese investors. And China has been a big investor in our transformations of mainstreaming uh, and uh, downstreaming the uh, uh, natural resources sectors, in particular 
this electric vehicle ecosystems. Um, we believe that uh, the uh, investments are critical to create the value added, moving up the value chain, and also creating good quality jobs for Indonesians in the end. Uh, eventually, Indonesians will be able to assume those posts. But while increasing the human capacity, it will take time. And to make sure that the smelters and the constructions is continuing at a good pace, and we need to bring in some of uh, our Chinese uh, workers uh, to, uh, to be able to help some of these projects. And that's already in accordance to the law. What needs to be handled better is this disparity of uh, income received by Indonesian workers and the Chinese workers. Because of the gap is quite big, uh, and the treatment is quite different, then it fueled some of this jealousy. So we need to do better. I think the companies need to communicate it better. Uh, the government needs to put a framework on how we could uh, expedite the human capacity building so that Indonesians uh, workers would be able to assume the jobs. And uh, we've told them like what is happening in a few of the mining uh, investments done in the past that in the past it was uh, the Americans, Australians taking uh, key uh, positions. But when I, uh, we took over one uh, coal mining company in the past called. So we need to do better. I think the companies need to communicate it better. Uh, the government needs to put a framework on how we could uh, expedite the human capacity building so that Indonesian uh, workers would be able to assume the jobs. And uh, we told them like what is happening in um, few of the mining uh, investments that take a fast trip. In the past, through uh, it's the Americans, Australians taking their TD position. But when I, uh, we took over a wild uh, coal mining company in the past called Adaro and my kid was also part of the investment group. Uh, it was full of Australians and uh, Americans in the past, but as we continue our leadership and bringing down this human capacity building into uh, the higher rank, that war for Indonesians can assume bridge us. And right now, we only have the big headfold um, of this. Uh, American mates or Australian trained uh, gliders it in our house or got them. So that will also have a naked hand and a nickel and it's not the racist, but it will take some time and we'll need to be more um, bored, um, active in opening up dialogue. See, so that this jealousy issue is just is you, you working as hard as I am, uh, and, but how proud you get more. Uh, but we need to tell them, yes, the Chinese workers get more because they're more efficient, because they they need to be incentivized because they drew all the way from China and they're away from their air family. Uh, so those type of uh, dialogues needs to, to be continued and the government needs to play the role as one of the private sectors, the media, the community states to support. So we are continuing to attract Chinese investments into Indonesia and not just that sector, but in the whole overall sectors, including infrastructures. We are uh, putting, I guess, uh, uh, close to 50 billion US dollars worth of infrastructure spending uh, in the next uh, couple of years, nearing to the 2024 uh, handover to the new government. 
uh, and we're opening up uh, investments not only from China but also from ASEAN as well as from uh, other regions as well. In terms of Chinese tourists, we understand that COVID restriction is still uh, not yet fully being lifted in China. So we uh, target a modest 125,000, uh, and which is about 10% of the pre-COVID number of 2.5 million. We're modest, we're very serious, but we tell them that we cannot entertain this, uh, what you call, there, there were uh, a practice which is not uh, going to be uh, tolerated anymore is this getting the numbers in, getting the incentives, but the tourists felt uh, betrayed because uh, they pay a certain amount of money, but they cannot get the experience that they want. We want to focus more on quality, whereby they know what they're getting. We will communicate with the uh, travel agent better. We need to work with partners. And through digitalizations and through disseminations of um, informations about attractions, uh, access accessibilities, and also amenities, uh, they would be better educated. So, uh, Tafamoka, Ticket.com, these are the large companies now working with the Chinese counterparts to make sure that Chinese visitors would be well informed of what they're going to see, so they will they will not be upset and disappointed when they come to Indonesia like in the past in the large numbers, but also uh, only be shown some of the things that they are not uh, um, they are not expecting. So this is uh, a big change that we're we're going to do. Okay, great. Uh, Chinese investments are at the rise, so hopefully Chinese tourists will return to Indonesia, but. Looking at the larger landscape of uh, China-U.S. tensions, how has Indonesia been navigating uh, that triangulation of relationship? How do you in, stay close and friendly to China and yet also maintain good relations with your neighbors as well as the U.S.? Well, that's our specialty. Indonesians are smiling everywhere. We smile to China, we smile to the U.S. Let's have some chapter. A Chinese investment card? U.S. you don't want? Okay, but uh, you miss out. The Chinese are taking all the profits, uh, but we need, uh, we continue to navigate and let's get our constitution that our um, relationship uh, for international relationship and for our political international relationship is always open, independent, and we like to work with people who have uh, the interest to create um, collaborations for the benefit of greater goods. Uh, and, and our uh, constitutions is basically that the investments in various sectors will facilitate, but it has to meditate also the local uh, Indonesian interests. Uh, domestic interests is the advancement of the economy, uh, how we could uh, make Indonesians move up the rank, become the fourth largest economy of the world, uh, north of $25,000 GDP per capita, with now at about 5000 so we need a quantum need to go almost five times of our GDP per capita. So we need to work with not only uh, China and the US, but also with Europe, with ASEAN countries. Um, and with our neighbors, we're, we're also in the ASEAN chairmanship, learning how we were able to provide a platform for the inaugural and the first uh, summit between President Xi and President Biden. Uh, actually, uh, a setting of Bali could not be a much better setting than that. And the uh, notion is that uh, we need to reduce the tensions, we need to uh, engage more on dialogues, and these are tough issues because 
geopolitics and uh, you're talking about the uh, long term uh, interests. Uh, Indonesia adopted the one China policy since uh, our independence, and we uh, we have been steadfast in making sure that our uh, diplomatic uh, relationship is on the foundations that we all believe our founding fathers uh, have been establishing. So uh, we'll continue to be active in our uh, sort of providing platform for U.S.-China uh, dialogues and this coming September, Jakarta will witness another hopefully meeting between President Xi and President Biden. Uh, but they both uh, have confirmed that they will attend. And I, I think uh, uh, by providing a uh, platform for dialogues is going to be uh, reducing the tensions. And coming up from that first summit, it could not be a, a better headline uh, that was a smiley. It was a lot of people were not expecting such a good outcome. Maybe it's the air of Bali, or maybe the beaches, or the badge, or maybe the food. Uh, but it 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 actually uh, was a, a a huge relief for us to see the two uh, presidents uh, actually share the same concerns on how to move forward. Uh, I have one last question before I open the floor to questions, and it's a very easy one. Do you want to be the next president of Indonesia? The last part, I said, uh, I'm ready, I'm getting to trouble. Because uh, when, uh, it it actually is quite, um, I don't know, like, I would say complex uh, in the politics because residents, uh, uh, and vice president nominations are being bad in my political parties, and these are uh, the, the larger than five figures. Uh, and uh, they're now, from now till uh, October, happening uh, what would be in the best interest. And I believe they would be in the best interest of Indonesia. I'm, I have been saying when I left uh, a business to join politics that. Uh, I do this uh, wholeheartedly to contribute because politics is very expensive in Indonesia. I actually uh, uh, lost a lot of investments. I sold many uh, portfolio companies to fund my political endeavor. But uh, it is uh, Indonesia, I mean, I would say, a continuing uh, economic uh, stories, economic progress, and the way that I looking at this, Indonesia is half of ASEAN in terms of the population, it's almost half of ASEAN in terms of the economy as well. So a stable Indonesia is good for ASEAN and a stable ASEAN is also going to be uh, great for Hong Kong and, and the region. So uh, I'm very optimistic that 2024 will be a, a good year for investments as the elections is going to be reconfirm, reconfirming the continuity progress towards uh, a better future. Yeah. Um, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here first. The answer is not a no. And <laughs> <laughs> on it, before I open the floor, I just want to add that the latest Tempo polls showed that 57% of Indonesian voters are millennials and they seem to be inclined to favoring the world. And the going uh, buzzword that we've been hearing in Indonesia, which I would like to share with those who are non Bahasa speakers, is that Pat Sandiaga is what you call someone who is Gal Ham Banget. I need that to you to try to stick. Uh, on that note, can I open your door? You're so fat. No, actually, he'd be very handsome. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. I heard God. Oh, that's two different funny things. I thought you were being wanted. I felt bad. Okay, on this little question from the floor, please identify yourself and preferably the organization of their prof. Please. Hey, Cole Pompin, today, relations to better Sino Indonesian relations, and where do you see a steady 
as placing in a bigger picture, so to speak. Thank you very much. How come we'll play a back here, uh, Brian? How come we'll be a main or huge troll uh, for all the better relationship between China and ASEAN? And if you reduce it to Indonesia, uh, Hong Kong uh, has been and continually to be uh, uh, financial centers that uh, Indonesia heavily promoted for uh, uh, traffic investments coming into Indonesia, be it from you know, public equities, be it from capital markets to direct investments. And I think many on um, the mainland China and how the companies operating uh, from China and also from Hong Kong are a great uh, target for investments into ASEAN and to Indonesia. I was speaking at the World Tap on the Tourism uh, Council Summit, a uh, global summit in uh, at Riyadh, whereby mm-hmm. um, it impact occurred that a lot of pictures coming in from and not just Hong Kong, Macau as well, uh, we scope where it's been said, uh, that they're looking into investments in ASEAN uh-huh. after it uh, uh, trouble at tourism side, but they are right now wanting to be sure that uh, it is the continuing progress that Indonesia the stability of ASEAN uh, uh, will, will continue to be there. And it, I've been uh, trying to uh, convince investors to come in. And the reasons I believe that Hong Kong will, has been and will continue to be a, a must stop for in the CP uh, investments. Uh, it's uh, a group. Then just Wall Street. But I think Minute is to. to they don't have really this of COVID, uh, but we believe that uh, we need Hong Kong-based uh, uh, investors or uh, investment manager, capital managers to uh, attract more uh, interest and investments coming in from China and Hong Kong into Indonesia, and particularly into the tourism sectors. We need more hotels. Hong Kong uh, MICE is one of the, um, I guess, the best in the world. We're trying to develop MICE in the streets, uh, creative economies. Uh, Hong Kong has produced uh, the best of efficiency in terms of productions and in terms of organizing uh, events. Uh, and uh, I would say technology uh, through digitalizations, uh, we could benefit uh, more from from uh, Ed Walter on the uh, I guess uh, both ways is not just Hong Kong investing in Indonesia. I, I even have friends from Indonesia who uh, actually not only visit Hong Kong but actually reside in Hong Kong uh, and they continue to invest in. Okay, we have some honest snubs who would rather just post questions on digital line. Please feel free to do so. Uh, there's one here that I think picks up on the answer that you just gave, and it is, is there a tool for collaboration between Hong Kong and in Indonesia in developing the IT startup sector? Huge. There are a lot of uh, potential uh, uh, working opportunities. I think we're working on, on several. Uh, and digitalizing since IT. Indonesia is number five in the world in terms of the ID startups, number three in the world in terms of created economy, other pieces of GDP. Uh, um, we're only uh, third after the US and along um, Korea. Uh, and I think we need to let it produce better uh, collaborations. And let us let me know there are 164,000 Indonesian, mainly our domestic uh, workers, domestic helpers. But as we grow up in skill set through upscaling, rescaling, and new scale, there are more opportunities for uh, we can all come at ASEAN and Indonesia in particular to share some of this uh, startup and uh, IT platform. So I believe 
uh, as we mean move into this artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, coding, blockchain, more and more uh, closer relationship uh, prime between uh, Indonesia, ASEAN, and in Hong as well. Are there other questions from the top, please? Chef Chen. Thank you, Sorry, Daya. Thank you, Minister, for a very good speech and Q&A, I think. That had been wouldn't have been generated by, uh, by chat GBT, so you would. <laughs> yeah. Now, I have a question about the, uh, the fascinating project to relocate your capital city from Jakarta to Nusantara by next year, I think. I, could you explain to us this project to create a brand new capital city uh, even, uh, on the island of Borneo? Thank you. President Jokowi made it his uh, uh, legacy of fulfilling one of the earlier greenies uh, that President Sukarno, our first president, uh, wanted to accomplish, which is Indonesia is not just job. Yes, 60% of the Indonesians live in Java, and most of the investments and prosperity are in Java. But Indonesia is 70,000 islands, and uh, the new capital in Shantana is more than ship building of just moving capital away from the Karda, but rather a, a, a clear message to Indonesians and the world that uh, we are going to grow more equitably uh, and we want to share prosperity with the Heschel. Eastern part of your tech not seeping uh, the prosperity that the uh, Java and seed in terms of education, healthcare. Although two profits in the eastern part of Indonesia is the fastest growing economy uh, in Indonesia, North Panuku with big color is 27% already of a total quarters growing at the EC base 30%. Uh, Central Sulawesi also growing at 80% uh, for the last uh, 10 years. So we believe that uh, relocating uh, is going to be uh, a strategic steps for the country to fulfill uh, the dream of the founding fathers in terms of building Indonesia and making sure that no one would be left behind when it comes to increase their uh, prosperity of Latin Europe. Second, uh, I think we have a challenge. It, how do we fund this? Because it will cost initially $50 billion. Uh, but I think increasingly uh, the, the government and stakeholders uh, believe that the government put the first seed capital, but it will open up for a public private partnership. Sir, how to make this a sustainable uh, city, given the environmental concern and so on and so forth. So we intend to make this a completely uh, uh, sustainable and uh, focusing on uh, the green concept, green capital. And this is uh, why we want to bring in the best of the best thinkers in terms of sustainability to be involved from early on. And we want to make sure that uh, uh, the concept of uh, green and blue economy will be embedded as a, in the new capital. Uh, we, I am optimistic that by next year, uh, some uh, Parts of the government will start to move to the new capital. It's a long journey. It would take maybe 10, 20 years to fully move the capital, maybe more. Uh, by the way, Canberra took close to 60 years to, uh, from the original idea to the actually uh, full implementation. So we hope uh, it won't be 60 years, but uh, it will be shuffled between. So you have your presidential office in the center, Nick. <laughs> okay, we have time for one last question before we wrap up. Uh, maybe the gentleman in blue at the back. 
I do, yeah. It's kind of a fatty part of their app. Is it on Bring App or Fable of the Woken Up from? So, uh, that's it. Is that probably you may also have that dog. How come it also our CD is leading that reason not just to service user, but also to the release? And is there specific reasons also? I'm looking very curious how even we show helping alcohol or glamorous the part of to be the drama relations to be the visa stall. Thank you. Yeah. Um, me to the east in so. Under Boy Pite, I was just in uh, Doha, and before that, and we were in Dubai and in Bria. I could not believe the base, in particular, in that, um, how Saudi is transforming and how it developed for uh, the leadership and the goals that they're setting, uh, putting billions of dollars in terms of infrastructure, attracting elements, and the dollar of the and the latest of. Well, ITs into the region. Uh, I think it will be a huge opportunity for Hong Kong to to look into the Middle East, and I think uh, the Middle East look at Southeast Asia, in particular the Asia, in terms of how Islam, democracy, prosperity, and equality point could actually be uh, achieved on a side by side basis. Uh, the democracy doesn't mean that it is anti it's not. Uh, and I think the Middle East is looking at that model uh, and led by UAE and Qatar and other optical countries in particular, the biggest, uh, I guess, uh, uh, the biggest in the group is somebody rate with its large resources as well as uh, it's now very bold leadership in terms of moving into this direction. So, uh, one of the fastest uh, uh, growing discussions between uh, Indonesia and the Middle East is in the field of new and renewable energies. Um, this is something that uh, they also realize that having oil and gas for the next century is a dream that they, uh, they continue to rely on. God natural resources that they would rely on. Uh, tourism, for it's, uh, they have been having steady inflow of uh, tourism in the region, thanks to the Umbra and Hajj, but it goes beyond it, as much as uh, their new areas be developed outside Mecca and Medina. Um, I think um, it is a strategic uh, move by the outcome leadership to Go on to these uh, road trips. It is going to be uh, a very long term uh, potential partnership. It is they still have managed a lot of capital, and I think it's also a good way to move some of their capital that is normally managed in New York and London to be managed here in Hong Kong. Although, uh, because Hong Kong has proven to be a, a very efficient financial center. Uh, to continue to post COVID, uh, I think the trend is more and more onshoring, uh, nearing to the growth of trial, uh, uh, the world, the global growth will be here in China, Southeast Asia, and India. This is where the global growth would be. Uh, Indonesia will grow 5% plus, India will grow, China will grow, the rest of the world uh, is struggling a little bit. Uh, in terms of the economy's growth. Uh, and that's why the Middle East, in terms of their uh, investments in the future, will look at, at this region. Definitely. Okay, on that optimistic note, ladies and gentlemen, please thank me. Please join me in Frank Kitson. <laughs>